The Fujifilm X-T3 has been out now for a while and it's packed with a lot of great features. In this video we'll go over some of the features and settings we love here at the rental shop. We have another video showing you how to set this camera up with the best possible Kini settings. In a separate video I'll go over some connection issues we found trying to connect with Android devices to this camera with the Fujifilm camera control app. So if you're interested in that, please follow the link in the description section. Now this camera has got so many buttons and controls to customize that things can quickly get out of hand. Resetting it is easy. Let's go into the menu functions, scroll down to the, um, the setup menu, the little spanner, and under user settings, you'll find two reset functions, a shooting menu reset and a setup reset. So if your X-T3 is starting to do all kinds of strange things, or you completely lost your place of where you were on it and what you set where, just go there, reset it all. Are you in the mood to just pick the camera up and shoot with minimal fuss? Well, it's easy. Just set your aperture to auto, set the ISO to auto, lock the dial, set your shutter speed to auto, lock the dial, and then you can use the compensation dial and set that to C for custom. And now the camera will be locked in P mode, or program mode, which is really easy to use. Your front command dial here on the camera will control your exposure compensation. And the rear dial will cycle through some different suggested uh, shutter speed and aperture combinations by the camera. Struggling with exposure settings, just check the exposure mode color dial here because you might have accidentally bumped it to spot meter reading, which is really accurate and nice to use, but can cause some issues if you don't want to use it. Now, the side door right here. Also, it's easy to remove. You just have a little button here on the inside of the door, right there at the top. Push that down and the door can come out. And now you have unhindered access to your ports on the side. Don't lose the door. Now, this camera does have a USB-C port. And yes, you can power it through this port, but please use the Fuji recommended Anchor Power Core products to do this. Or even better, just get a vertical grip um, with the Fuji AC adapter. I know at the moment there are heaps of vlogs out there proclaiming how cheaper and other brands of USB power banks and USB chargers works just as good as the Anchor Power Core products. Yeah, it all sounds like a great idea until you fry your camera. And then those couple of dollars you saved yourself would come in real handy towards buying a new body. If you find the eye sensor right here too sensitive or you want to save some battery power when you're out about shooting, then you can use the view mode button right there to quickly cycle and toggle between your various um, swapping options whether or not you just want the LCD panel active or if you only want the viewfinder to be active. Now this is a really handy shortcut button to have. Do you want to do some silent shooting in a situation where you need to be unobtrusive? Easy. Just going to go into your menu functions under your camera uh, menu options, find your shutter type and just make sure that you set it to electronic shutter and then go down to your setup menu, sound menu and just make sure all these little shutter volumes and options in here is switched off. For that matter of fact, just make sure that all these little sound options are switched off and silent and then off you go. Now that's really handy. Now I know there's some issues with using the electronic shutter, so just watch out because using the electronic shutter can cause some banding to appear on your images under artificial light and sometimes very fast moving objects can come out slightly distorted. For that matter, you can enjoy silent movie shooting as well because as nice as these mechanical dials are, they sure are noisy as well when you're trying to record video. So how do you do that? Firstly, just on this collar dial here, just make sure that you're in movie mode. Go into your menu options under movie settings and the very last setting in all your menus is movie silent control. And just go in there and activate it. And now, all these mechanical dials have been deactivated. And you can control everything by tapping here on your screen and using your various toggle buttons, you can change your shutter speed, wide balance settings, aperture settings, ISO settings, everything that you need. That's really handy. And the best thing about this is 
Now your movie settings has been also been separated from your still settings. So whatever you set up here under movie options, those settings will stay there for the next time for you to use. When, so if you quickly have to switch to stills mode, take a couple of pictures, change your settings. Um, all those movie settings will be there waiting for you the way you had it set up if you switch back to movie mode. That's a really handy function. Now, slow motion is also really easy to do on this camera. Once again, just make sure you're in your video mode, go into your menu options, and in here you'll find a setting called Full HD High Speed Record. And if you go in there, you'll see you have a couple of options. Um, so you can record at either 120 or 100p, and these will be default playback speeds, which is actually quite handy when you want to drag that into a timeline. So just here, pick your poison and go and have fun. Just note that um, these recordings are limited to around six minutes. They're all going to be shooting at 200 megabits per second. And it's a really good idea to experiment with shutter speeds and also between 100 and 120 frames per second to see which one reduces blurring and flickering of whatever you're trying to record. Now another overlooked feature on this camera is that it's got kind of a sort of a night mode thing going on. So if you're shooting in the dark and you find that you, these settings on the screen are really too bright and you're struggling with that, you can go into your menu, scroll down to user settings, select screen setup and scroll all the way down through all of these options, all the way down to information, contrast adjustment. And in here you have an option to, to set it to dark ambient light, which is great. So now it just dims it a little bit. All your settings are shown in this dark red. This is really easy on the eyes and makes the camera more pleasant to use in dark environments. Thank you for watching.